All right, what's up guys? Captain Rick Stanzik here, and it's an exciting day. Uh, picking up my brand new 2023-25 Contender Bay Boat. Getting it from Gus Toy Box here in the Florida Keys, your number one contender dealer. If you need to buy or sell a boat, call Gus. Um, we're gonna walk you through this thing. It's a beautiful boat. Been waiting uh, almost three years for it. Pretty much the same as my other boat. Had a few things changed, but really looking forward to getting her out on the water. So come on, let's go check it out. We'll do a nice walkthrough and you can check out all the nooks and crannies and uh, see what an awesome boat Contender Bay is. All right guys, so we just got the contender back to my house. She's gonna be sitting here for a little bit while we get things uh, you know, fixed up with uh, life jackets. I gotta get the leaning post installed and a few other tweaks. But luckily she fit right under this little tarp here, so nice spot to keep her in the yard. We're gonna do a quick little walk through here, starting with the back of the boat and then work our way to the front. For power, we got a Yamaha 300 on here. Great motor, it pushes this boat real nice. You know, top end, I think she'll hit probably close to 60 miles an hour. Does real good on the fuel. You know, normally I cruise around uh, 40 miles an hour, which is, you know, 3,800 RPM. So real nice cruise. You're usually getting close to three miles a gallon. I think maybe two six, something like that, two seven. So really good. I put twin power poles on here, 10 footers. I like having the 10 footers because a lot of places we fish in the bay, that water's seven, eight feet deep. I and mean, with the eight foot pole, you know, sometimes you can barely touch the bottom, but it's not really been sticking far enough to hold the boat. So the 10 footers lets you fish a lot of places, um, you know, using the poles around moats and things like that. So they're nice. And having two of them holds you a lot better than one. And then also if one breaks, you know, usually you got the other one working. So that's what I had on my old contender and stuck with those um, power poles. Really good uh, piece of equipment to have on the boat. We also got the Bob's machine jack plate on here. Being able to jack the motor up and down is real nice when you're running in shallow water. If you're trying to idle, you know, in shallow water, you can get the prop up a little bit more than just trimming it. Uh, and it also helps with fuel economy, you know, on those flat calm days, you can kind of jack the motor up and get where the prop's just barely in the water and uh you know save you a little bit on fuel there too so yeah that's what we got on the back of the boat here we'll move inside and uh start showing you some things in there all right so the back of the boat is real nice you got a nice big platform to sit and to lay on to walk on easy to have two people up here fishing or doing whatever and they do the back of the boat real nice here we have these flip up seats which uh had the kind of the same exact thing on my old contender um they're real nice got you a nice backrest, nice place to sit and it's in the back of the boat, so when it's rough, it's a real nice place to sit. They also give you this cushion, which goes over the bait well here, and then you have a, uh, a backrest that goes into these two zero degree rod holders. So you can have four people all sitting back here when you're going through rough water. Um, real nice, and this backrest and cushion, it's real easy to make go away when you just want the bait well if you don't need all that seating. In here too, you have a nice big giant bait well, uh, clear lid so you can kind of see in there if uh, you know you want to make sure your, your pump's running. Um, <clears throat> has two drains in here. I also had them put an aerator in there which is always nice to have those aerators. Real easy to have, they don't draw a lot of juice and uh, it's always just a good little secondary thing to have on in case your live well pump goes out. It'll help keep your bait alive a little bit longer and better. And behind it here we have our little secondary well. Have another aerator in there. Um, these both operate off the same pump um, but it's a, it's a good strong pump. I think 1100 gallon an hour. So that's your secondary uh, well back there. And in the back here you have bilge access on both sides. That's your swim ladder there, which is real nice to have. It kind of just tucks up into the boat. You don't even know it's there, but in an emergency, which I've had, you can uh, slide it out and it lets somebody climb back on the boat real easily from the back of the boat. And so always a good thing to have on a boat. And this one just tucks up, you know, nice out of the way there. We got our power pole pumps and stuff in here. We also got our raw water wash downs on each side in there too. You have center bilge access. Um, this is a nice little area to keep like a cast net, which is what I do on my old boat. And they have the water connections in here, which uh, they moved. They used to be um, in the deck on my old boat, but kind of you had hoses just sitting there in the way. So this is a little bit more tucked up out of the way, which is a little bit nicer. Um, you got your fresh water fill up here. And then this is the center bilge access, bilge pumps and your um, bait pump, you know, uh, right through here. 
and a little bit bigger pie eye there. It's a little bit easier to get into than on the uh, the old contender that I had. So that's a nice uh, nice upgrade there. All right, and so here's the console, the Helm of the Beast. We got a nice Garmin 8612 uh, XSV chart plotter, same one I went with on my old boat. Um, it's got live scope on there. We have a side scan transducer on the transom, and it also has a through hull transducer so it can read bottom while you're running. The one thing with these stepped hull boats, uh, you can't read bottom if you don't have a through hull transducer when you're at speed because of all the uh, bubbles and stuff from the stepped hull. Um, so yeah, that's been a great plotter on my old boat and I've stuck with Garmin, I uh, just love their products and the live scopes, you know, really nice addition. We got a Fusion sound system. We got all our controls here and buttons um, for everything. Aerators, water wash downs, live well pumps, bilge pumps. This all looks real nice and clean. Um, we got a plug for a Q beam there and USB plugs there. Got your power trim, nice Edson wheel, compass, your uh, anchor light, and I had them also do this zero degree rod holder here so you could put an umbrella or I, I like to put my GoPro on a stick there. And that also doubles as a cup holder, which you'll also see these uh, cup holder slash rod holders back here. Um, they, they serve both purposes. So those are real nice to have um, and you can get those real easily. Uh, and otherwise, yeah, the console, you got three rod holders on each side. Uh, I was hoping they would be able to put four in, but um, with all the stuff that's inside the console, they were only able to get three, but I'm probably just gonna uh, put like a good heavy duty suction cup one on there just to have a fourth on each side. All right, and we also got a nice windshield here when you're going more than 40 miles an hour on a skiff, it's always nice to have that windshield. Caught a couple bugs here on the, uh, on the ride home on the trailer too. And you got your uh, running lights here, and then we got inside the console, we'll take a peek in here real quick. Now they do everything really beautiful, you know, with Contender, with all the rigging and stuff. You can see how pretty and nicely laid out all the switches are. GPS, you got your whole electrical panel here um, and everything. Radio, um, I don't use a lot, but it's there for emergencies, so I just had them put it in the console. You got your battery switches here, uh, trolling motor breaker there. Um, here's another access for the... Uh, Fusion stereo, and then we got all our batteries down here. Um, she's got five batteries, two house batteries, and then three for the trolling motor. Um, I had them put the Minn Kota alternator charger in here, so those trolling motor batteries will charge while the outboard's running. Um, so that's really nice. It keeps those batteries nice and healthy uh, when you're out there fishing and it's having to work real hard. Um, also got charger for the, uh, the house batteries in here. And uh, yeah, so this is what it looks like inside here. Everything's real nice and clean. Um, and this thing stays really nice and dry. Um, you know, on my old boat, all the connections and everything really look pretty much brand new after three years. So that's really nice thing about these boats. Everything is really uh, stays nice and clean and protected in here. Now up here, they call this the living room because this is where you have all your nice kind of comfy seating. Um, it's nice sitting here while you're fishing. When you're running sometimes, it gets a little rough out here, so that's why it's nice to have that seating in the back, uh, you know, on bumpy days. But otherwise, you got plenty of seating here, backrests. We got a fish box in the deck here, um, pretty much same as it was on my old boat. Uh, you know, that could serve as a drink, you know, drink box too, put plenty of ice in there. Um, but yeah, nice to have, or a good place to store cast nets again, if you want them up here comes with this drink box here as well um, which again you got the backrest of the console and plenty of room for ice and drinks in here and real nice cooler you know comfy so that's good the storage here I like what they did with the cushions on the old boat the uh, the old hatches used to kind of pinch where these cushions would meet um, and so you were always kind of just grabbing them if people weren't careful opening and closing them but on this, they made the cushion extend out here. So I like that they changed that. Otherwise, this kind of pretty much looks almost the same. You got storage in here, um, which is real nice and um, nice place to put things and stays pretty dry up here as well. Same thing on this side. And then you also have this front hatch, 
which again is just a little bit deeper, um, but again, a good place you can throw a few life jackets in or anything else for storage, or it could also serve as a drink box if you wanted to as well. And this cushion too is nicer as well. Uh, the old one used to kind of buckle down here, and so you had to like unbutton it to lift this, this hatch up, but this is a little bit easier to get into, you know, it just opens and closes there like, like that. So very nice. All right, and up front here, we got another zero degree rod holder here. Um, I went with a uh, platform for the bow. This is real nice to stand or sit on, um, you know, especially if you're fighting tarpon and things like that when it's rough, uh, gives people a nice place to sit. And this can all go away. It's got the nice turnbuckle here and uh, you can pull the screw out and then that's all kind of flush. So it's almost like it wasn't even there if you wanted to take it off. Um, but yeah, definitely nice to have that. Plenty of room in this bow hatch here. I'll, I'll show you what's inside here as well. You got plenty of room in here and this is actually a, a, a double storage lid. So I throw my life jackets uh, up here usually. And then you also have another pretty good sized box under here. You know, the kids life jackets a lot of times fit in there. Um, but yeah, plenty of room for storage and this all stays pretty dry. Um, you know, it's in the bow obviously. So if you're taking waves over the bow, sometimes some water could get in here, but usually not too bad. And that's obviously only under like more extreme conditions. But yeah, plenty of storage up front here. That's one thing I liked about the bow hatch on, uh, on my contender before was plenty of room up there. All right, and so yeah, here is where the uh, trolling motor plugs in. They have the live scope cable routed through there. I might change this plug here. These Marine Co plugs uh, are notorious for giving, giving people trouble. Uh, I usually end up just hardwiring mine because uh, I never take the trolling motor off of there. So we might do that. But yeah, there, there'll be a couple little tweaks and changes. I'm sure there always is with a new boat. Um, but yeah, so that's the anchor locker. Plenty of room to put an anchor in here and uh, when you need it for emergencies. But you know, with my trolling motor set up on my old contender, I think I've only used the anchor maybe half a dozen times in three years. So <laughs> it doesn't get a lot of use. All right, and so if you don't know, when they say a stepped hull, these are what the steps in the hull are here and here. Uh, basically what that does is it just kind of creates a little air pocket for when the boat's on plane air gets sucked up under there and kind of helps lift the back of the boat up. Um, really helps you with your fuel economy and makes the boat, you know, just perform a lot better. It's really just a nice, nice design to have. Contenders really got it right. Um, that hasn't changed at all, you know, from my old boat to this one. And uh, yeah, it's um, a really nice ride. These boats are super, super dry. If you've ever been on one, you know, you can get out there on days when it's blowing 15 to 20 and cruise right across the bay at all different angles, you know, things you couldn't really dream of doing on uh, on other boats that I've been on. So performance wise, contender hull, it's it's hard to beat. We stopped by to see Brother Rick's new boat. Looks nice. All right, and then at the very tip top of the boat here, we have a Minn Kota trolling motor. Um, I went with the, uh, the old school Tarova, which is the manual one you put up and down. Um, they've just been kind of tried and true for me. I've had them for years and just reliable. I usually get a couple seasons out of them without issue. And that's a lot of, you know, hours on these things and they're uh, easy to fix. They have some of those newer brushless motors now, which, um, you know, sound pretty good and I may, may change to that eventually, but um, they're also twice as much. And so this works, you know, what, for what I need it for. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We got the live scope transducer attached right there. I may change how this is mounted on there. I have a little bit different mount on my old boat, but we'll see how it works with this uh, when we get it out there and, uh, and go from there. But um, yeah, this is basically it. The whole walkthrough of the uh, 2023 Contender Bay boat. Beautiful boat. I'm really happy with the way it came out and looking forward to getting out there on the water with it. So anyways, thanks for watching guys. I hope you found some good info on this boat. If you're thinking about buying a Contender, remember check out Gus at Gus Toy Box, uh, your number one Contender dealer. Yeah, so really happy with the way the boat came out here and look forward to getting out fishing on it and hopefully we'll be doing some fishing videos on her soon. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you like the video, hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you next time.